A very warm welcome in to the Hoops Fix Bram Summer League 2023 men's final here, live from the Brixton Recreation Centre and brought to you by Stan Sox and Contested.com. Out on the floor right now, we're seeing some pre-game introductions. We've already seen the Glacier Boys be introduced. They have Kane Henry, Dan Aiken, Andre Arasol making his debut for this season. Jack Burnell, Danny Evans, Carl Wheatle, Boban, Jack Demi, and Josh Steele. They will be in the black uniforms. They will be defending the basket on the right side of your picture for this first 20 minutes of action. Hip space. The other side to have made it. They're in the red uniforms. They have Victor Olerarin, Hafiz Abdul, Matthew Ullman, Brian Akanmu, Tola Akiki, Denzel Ubiaro, Jordan Gray, Patrick Lanapekin, and El Bernard. Itzure and Dean Wanless, their head coach is Joel Ofele and Ricky Broadmoor is the head coach for the Glacier Boys. Darren Port going to bring you all the action alongside the main man, Stan. What's up, Darren? What's up, Stan? What's up, hey, sir, what man? Saying? I don't mean to shout in your ear. Let me just, <laughs> I'm just a bit excited, man. It's the pro and final. This is, yeah. this is big. We've already had some great games today and now we're here it's all here for silverware like i'm excited to see the reigning champs try and defend their crown as well as catching hoop space who have a lot to prove get some redemption for last year we and saw yeah no sorry to go across you've just seen a great women's final yeah i know we're in store for a great men's final yeah. and like you say the glacier boys yeah who's the one team that's beating them this year Hoop space. Come on. It's hoop space. hoop space. It's hoop space. You know, and uh, and then you know, someone asked me who they think who, who do you think is gonna win Stan and I said, you know what, yeah. On paper, yeah, Glacier Boys should probably be getting it, but I think Hoop Space won it more. And sometimes in the prime in this environment, that's what wins the game. Whoa, they want it more. That's I, I, a big I, I, that is a massive claim. I think they want it more, man. I've like, spoken a lot with the guys there. These guys are hungry, man. Last year, you know, they didn't make it to the final. Yeah, it's true. They played in a couple of tournaments already, other summer tournaments, and it hasn't gone their way. So I think they're really, really trying to get a dub today. Especially against the Glacier Boys, who are the favourites to win. That's true. So that's true. I think for a lot of people. Glacier Boys will be the favourites to take the dub. Yeah. We're going to see, because the game ain't played on paper. It's not played on yeah, a spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah. It's played here on the hardwood, live in Brixton. Rec Centre. Fine up a setting venue for this matchup. You cannot hope for it. It's standing room only. Just one more time, Darren. I just wanted to make it evidently clear. This is the final. Look at the venue. Look at the venue, it's mad. Every single seat in the bleachers is filled. The baseline is packed. There's man them sitting on the wall. Bro, this is what it's about. It's about to get crazy in here. It's about to get loud. Go it's about crazy. to get hectic. As Ricky Broadmoor is in ballot by uh, one of our match officials. But no, this is, this is winning time. This is what they've been coming here week in, week out. Some people are like, oh, it's a pro arm, it's a summit, no. This is, this is pride for these. Yeah. And also, as well as it being a tune-up, you no, have no idea who's in this crowd, who's watching, who could see you. Yep. Hey, I saw this guy, he, he showed out at this tournament in Brixton. That could be something real special in these players' journeys. And it's Hoop Space taking out the floor for the first time, attacking the basket to our left-hand side. That's a hand in there. On Dean Wanless, number eight, picking up that foul. Carl Wheatle. <laughs> oh yeah, just a GB men's yeah. captain. Yeah, just just your national team captain. Playing his basketball at Pistoia in the Italian second tier. That is the caliber of player we are talking about. Now, if you've only joined us for the final, welcome. Thank you for spending your time with us. That shot doesn't go. The clock's not going to stop for the first 38 minutes of this game. And at the free throw line, you only get one shot. It's for the value that you were fouled whilst you were shooting. So that shot would have been worth two. As that's a lovely little layoff pass. Jack to me. Good. Big for fella two. doing big things. Big man doing big man things, like you say. Fis Abdul going to work. 
What was the call? It looked like a foul call. We'll see exactly who that's called on. One black with the hold. That's Kane Henry. Now, important thing to note, Glacier Boys, they're a little bit short-handed, more so than they have been in recent weeks. Mm, missing just, some key players there. For sure. I mean, a couple of real quality additions. Don't get us wrong. As Hafiz Abdul trying to drive inside. Forced outside. No good from that long two. And Kane Henry kicks it up the floor to Josh Steele. Trying to push the tempo out of play. And uh, last, last week, just for example, introduced Carl Wheatle, GB men's captain. Yep. Yeah. Casually. <laughs> you sound a bit starstruck, mate. Pull up too good for Victor Olarerian. Oh, that's a goal! Oh, Boban Jackson, me! My word! Throws it down. Yes. Everybody <laughs> off their feet. Ricky Broadmoor just shot a look in this direction. Oh, yeah. Standard, regular. That's what that's what they've come to expect in their workouts from Boban. Through right. contact at the stripe. Doesn't finish off the three-point play. My goodness. Rafis Abdul skips inside into the hands, out the hands of Peter Toure. Out of play. Last year's MVP. Yeah. Could he repeat? Yeah, just, just a reminder that the MVP for for the Who's Fix Prime is awarded to the tournament MVP. So it's not just about how you perform the final, how oh, consistent so that's, you are. I tell you, that's a good start, though. Yeah. Mid-range jumper, we're tied at four. Driving in. Nice finish, no nonsense there. Danny Evans. Andre Russell. Off his feet. Trying to send it around the corner, that's no good. From Jordan Gray. I mean, this really is something here. In Brixton. I can't even see the stairs anymore, man. <laughs> Where are the stairs at? What are stairs? They turned into seats. Exactly. We've got to give a special shout out to the live stream producer as well, Paige Robinson. The icon, shout Paige Robinson. Paige. Yeah, and all of the volunteers that have made this a spectacular way to spend a summer. And there's plenty more hoops throughout the year as well. Olerarin, step back. No good from outside. Kane Henry pulls down the board. Another potential MVP candidate. He's shown out every time on the floor. Jack Demi backing down Peter Toure. Tries to kick it inside. Doesn't work. Gets it back. That would have been something real special had that gone. Matthew Ullman trying to push the tempo. One less. Great ball movement, Hafiz Abdul. Still Abdul with a little shimmy shake on Kane Henry, just short. It's been pulled down by Carl Wheatle. Not able to Euro step his way to the basket. Euro steps his way to the foul stripe. And Dan Aiken, the Newton D1 player. With the foul. As you said there, uh, Carl, we were obviously playing in the second division in Italy, just coming off a championship with that team as well. That's why his uh, his season went so long. Yeah, his season did go so long. Didn't stop playing too long ago. Also mm -hmm. represent the Midnight Madness team over at K54. The little festival just gone. Are you there by any chance? Huh? You were there. Living it up. That's pretty lit. That's pretty lit. Pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Ullman. I tell you what, could it? I was excited to get back to Hoot Six though. Olerari nearly has it swiped. Keeps hold of it. Yeah, separation. Three balls on the way. Oh. Oh. Nothing but net. Denzel oh. Ubiaro. Oh. That's a pro move. Uh, he's a pro player. Newcastle Eagle BBL. Oh, Kirk Himes, Kane, Henry. Reigns it back the other way. Right back at you. I think we want to see a lot of this man back-to-back -back buckets in this game. I mean, we saw 
Some real free-flowing basketball in our men's 3-4 final. Hoping for more of the same from this one here. Going inside to Toure, fading away, can't go. Seven plays nine, it's Glacier boys in the lead. Only by a little bit. Yeah, that's good for two. Foul is called. We'll see exactly who that was on. I think it's on Weetle. It is on Weetle. I make that his second personal. So Jack Demi takes to the bench, as does Carl Weetle. Dan Aiken, Utah D1 player, and Andre Arasol. Last season with the Worthing Thunder. Made it all the way to the NBL D1 final. As Peter Ture able to wander into the lane. No problem. And a basket goes. Good to see Dan Akin back on home soil, man. Okay, and that's the sort of thing you can you get to see. Oh wow, Kane oh. Henry, oh my goodness, just power, precision, puts it down, foul called on 12, Dean Wanless. Ridiculous, ridiculous man. And again, that is why he's just signed an extension in Germany, second tier, which in case you don't know, is a very high standard of basketball. Kane Henry there. Another member of that England gold medal Commonwealth Freaks 3 team. Just off the mark though, one less. Nine plays 13, Glacier Boys in the lead, good space, looking to bring that down. He's out of play. And the youngster, timeout has been taken. Early timeout here by the hoop space fellas. So 207 left in the first. Nine plays 13. Now, Mark Clark, something that we both appreciate the work of and used to commentate quite a lot myself. He he didn't care about the time, the situation, whatever. If he wanted to call time, he's calling time. Like his team could be at 30. If he saw something he didn't like, guess what? We're gonna have a chat. And I like that. That's I think that's important. Yeah. To, honest, to take it if you if you see something that you like or dislike and you want to fix or do more of then bring it in why why wait until something's got out of hand it's true Joe Rafule a very passionate coach as well you see how he's talking to his players there and uh, what I like about this Hoot Space team is that it's very family orientated uh, you know what, what the Hoot Space team are building um, not just around their team but also around their brand is something very very special and um, it's great to see them competing in this tournament as well Absolutely, and the two years that they've been in it, they have really shown themselves to be quite the basketballing outfit. Strengthening for this season. And as the Glacier Boys back onto the floor, they've added Jack Burnell. Jack Burnell, a member of the Hemel Storm this year. A team doing a, the sweep in Division 1. Oh, they've been, they were unbelievable. Yeah. They were absolutely without, without equal. And I think a lot of people going into the air thought, looked at that Worthing Thunder and thought, oh, hello. Yep. And even still, Hamill. They're just a machine of the team. We saw Aaron Ryder there earlier on, obviously, the Division 1 MVP. Getting it going in one of the earlier men's games. Good to see more of his teammates in the tournament. Oh, Andre Arasol driving in, tried to dunk the pass around. The body of the defender didn't go. Victor Olerarin kicks to the corner. Denzel Obiaro gets it to one list. No good from outside. He definitely has that shot. You don't see much of it in the BBL, but we have seen it more here. Steel just away from Arasol. Obiaro taking it the other way. Obiaro tries to dump it off inside to Olerarin. Not able to go.
Henry on the outside. Dumps it inside. And Aiken, his opening basket in the contest. Nine plays 15, one minute to play in this first quarter. And we're going to see Tolera Kiki check in next time for hoop space. Olerarin diving in, slowing things down. Yeah, very crowded paint there. Very, very crowded paint. I think communication seems to be a bit better between the hoop space guys. But Victor also, we've seen him be so aggressive in this tournament. I'd like to see him in that position go up for the shot. I completely agree with you. I think he operates better with a, as the most players, with a bit more space. So if he had a lane to attack, you can come late. He's still going to try and go through. Yeah. Hacking on the outside. Glacier boys, certainly not a small team. Steel. Bumps it off to the D1 college man. Burnell. Inside to Steel. Up at the elbow. Oh, banks it home. Doomsday sale. <laughs> at points. the buzzer. No good. Time had expired. And at the end of one, the Glacier Boys in a solid lead. Nine play, 17. Stan, tell me, talk to me. What have we just seen? Well, a really, really exciting first quarter, and it started off with a Jack Domi absolute banger. I don't know who's who, who, who he got that dunk on, but I'm sure it's going to end up on a highlight somewhere. Oh, my goodness, yes. Um, I think it's been an exciting first quarter, as I said, like... The Glacier boys leading the game 17 to 9. Uh, we've seen the Hoot Space guys trying to adjust to what's going on, but you know, it's going to be a difficult game when you talk about all the weapons that um, the Glacier boys have. And when, when you add the fact that you have Ricky coaching them as well, it makes it a really, really difficult team to try and beat. If you're Hoot Space in this game, Darren, what are you going to do in the second quarter to try and get that deficit back down and even maybe take the lead. I think on defense, you got to try and, I was going to say crowd the paint more, trying to collapse inside, but then that leaves, they got some real shooters got on the outside as well. But I think that would be my, my reflexive response is, can we, can we control the middle? Can we control the paint? Because I'd say what Glacier boys, they're seven of eight. They're seven of eight from, from two-point land, we can't allow that if we're heat space. Very efficient, shooting 88% from the field in the first quarter. Like they're outside shooting, they're only one on one from outside, but they've been allowed to do largely whatever they want inside. That has to change for heat space. If you are a heat space individual, going down low, it's Jackson. Has it stripped? That's a bit more like it from the team in the red uniforms. Bruh, I just have to say again, the vibes in here are crazy. Man. Three like, balls the off that, the mark. The fact that we have a full arena right now, it's an arena, sports center right now, the Brixton record is nuts. We can call it an arena. It might as well be. I'm okay with that, as Jack Demi fouled on the floor. That'll go against Victor Olerarin, just waiting for the final confirmation. It is Victor Olerarin. Who, I mean, for me, MVP award or no, he has been one of the absolute standouts of this tournament just from a, just such a fun player to watch. Already was, you saw him throw down last season and oh my, he's buried some so far this year too. He's off the floor for now though as Carl Wheatle trying to find his way inside. Andre Arosol fakes. Doesn't get the shot away. Peter Toure finds Ubiaro. Ubiaro puts it home off the glass. That's more like it for his face. 11 play, 17. First blood in this second period. Gets it right back. He's going to get a little bit more, maybe. Heading to the stripe is Danny Evans. I'll tell you. Talking about what well, Hoops Space needs to do, they can't afford, like you said earlier, to trade. Yeah, can't afford to trade. We saw it earlier on in a couple of games, you know. The team's always just behind. You can't go bucket for bucket when you're trying to get back to lead. It's, it expends a lot of energy. 
You know, if you're playing good defense, reward yourself with good offense. But if you get a bucket, you've got to lock in, lock up. Especially to concede and one as they just did. 11 plays 21. 10 points is the biggest margin in the matchup so far. Shots up. Shots off the mark from Tolerakiki. Out the hands of Andre Arasol. Oh, oh Ubiaro. Denzel Ubiaro has got more hang time than an old jacket. You know that one in the cupboard that you just don't take out, just stays on the hangar. Blocking foul called on Denzel Ubiaro. This man's got all the lines. I'm waiting for somebody to travel. We know you got something good though. <laughs> It might be regular, but still. 13 plays, 20. 7, 10 left in the second period of play. Plenty of action left in the Who's Fix Pro-Am Summer League 2023 men's final. That's just been thrown away. Danny Evans hustling back to try and keep it in bounds. Danny Evans leading the scoring for the Glacier Boys right now. Seven points. Obiaro, the floor general right now, up the floor. Now a huge fan favourite from his time in Plymouth. It fakes. Three ball. Too strong there, Lanapaki. Inside though, Toure! Oh. That's got him off their feet. Oh, and that's going to go the way of Glacier boys. That's steady on. This is a matchup I'm looking forward to seeing, man. Peter Toure, Boban Jack Domi. That's a great matchup. Not the first time they've met, and again, the only team to beat Glacier Boys, of course, was Hoop Space. 44-52, into the corner, Andre Arasol, just short, Peter Toure pulls down the board. I don't know how he kept his feet in bounds, fair play oh. to him, oh, it's low, Lana Pekin hits him with the move, hits it to Toure, no basket, oh, travel is the call. Wow. Goal of Valle nearly ended up with us. I don't believe it. Wow. Well, you can't argue with the guys <laughs> in the black and white stripes, man. They're the experts. I, could, I, would, I couldn't be in that position. Personally, I couldn't do it, mate. Five points to gap. 15 plays, 20. 5.30 left in the second period of play here at the Hoops Fix Brown Summer League men's final for 2023. The three ball is good. Jack Burnell sinks it from outside. Yeah, Jack Bernal, we see him do that for Hemel as well. Very good role player on that team, but does his job. Good drive. Ubiaro elevates. What did I tell you about our hang time, bro? Uh -huh. You ain't kidding. Good ball movement from... Oh, they find an open Bernal. Just a fraction too deep on the shot. Didn't go. Toure kicks it out. Three balls on the way, John Gray. It was halfway down. It stayed out. It's Jack Domi. Collects one to the face from Akiki. Good screen set by Steele. Carl Weasel just body. Big old foul there. Talk us through that one, mate. Bro. If that went in, yeah, he's gonna have it, it's just one of those days. <laughs> there just, was, pa just pack it up now. There was just GB captain. That, that, that's, a, that's a great day for the GB captain right there if that stuff goes in. Three ball, Jack Burnell. That's yeah. his second from outside. This guy's got a stroke, man. Real nice from outside. Denzel Obiaro battling, battling away. Somebody drew the foul. We'll see exactly who. Uh, that was Kane Henry. You see, I, I don't know about that one, man. I, I, I think that's good defense. I think that's good defense from Kane, you know, like he's trying to hold his ground, you know, and you got to let the guys play through that one, man. Like, you know, calling that now, you're going to have to keep that in the same energy a bit later on when the game's going to get a bit tighter, man. In space, call time. 17 plays, 26. They were as close as in five. That's stretched out a little bit. Back up to nine points, the difference. They've got four personal fouls, uh, sorry, four team fouls with 351 left in the second. So something to bear in mind there, something to think about. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to see what Huso is going to bring out this time out again. Um, they really, really need that good energy. 
um, to give them a chance of coming back into this game. Quick look at the stats. Denzel Ubiario, Mr. Hangtime, currently with nine points in the competition. Are you trying to crown a, crown a nickname here? Huh? Denzel Ubiario? You call him a Hangtime? Mr. Hangtime. Mr. Hangtime. I don't know. Maybe we've got to do something around jumpers. Yeah, I was going to say jackets, coach. Jackets. I don't know. Um, Work on that. I don't know. If you're, if, if you're watching, then you can comment. Uh, <laughs> Let us know in the comments. Give us some nicknames for Denzel Ubiario. Tweet him. <laughs> tweet. tweet him. So you got. So what the hoop space have cooked up? Three balls on the way. No good from Ubiaro. Let's look at the media members on the baselines too. Kane Henry. Oh, spin move. Denial. No, it's a foul. Called I mean, on Patrick Lanapekin. I mean, that's another thing you're talking about. Their media members, just the sheer amount of content creators and photographers and people that are just looking to use basketball as an opportunity to to build their creative size is incredible, man. Um, big shout out to all of the guys on the baselines that help us basically share the game without you guys. A lot of people wouldn't see what's going on here, um, and I hope it continues to grow, man. More people will be inspired to do great things around the game. The better the infrastructure is the more chance there is for growth all around, so. 100%, yeah. 100%. The more the exposure, the better opportunity for everybody involved to help grow this brilliant, brilliant sport. So the great thing about Hoops Fix, everything it does for the community, fantastic charity, gives opportunity for a lot of people to, you know, nurture their interests. Driving in, Ubiaro, no good. He is gonna go to the stripe, he's gonna shoot one for two, and I think that's been called on Dan Aiken. That's his first person, it was. Dubiaro with a chance to get himself to double digits in points here. 17 plays, 26. They've not scored in a little while, hoop space. This would be a, a great opportunity to arrest that. Just short into the hands of Steele. Kane Henry, inside, Aiken can't finish. Quick fire rebound, fired up the floor to Ubiaro, spin move, can't finish. Gets his own rebound out of nowhere, the three ball is good. Hafiz Abdul doing what he does from outside and he's sending Ricky Broadmoor to talk things over. Six point game, my man, six point game. Now, it's got that feel. It, it doesn't feel like we've got 21 minutes and 43 seconds left. It feels like we've got 143 left yeah. in the game. We've got another half of this. Yeah, and bro, this is what I'm saying. Like, a game like this, you know, you've got a team like Hootspace, like I said, looking for redemption after last year's competition. Got a lot to prove right now playing the Radiant Champions. It was always going to be a fantastic game. Great talent on the floor. And yeah, we're in for a good one, bro. Like the question's got to be, how do these players sustain this intensity? Because it is intense. The basketball that they're playing is intense. The atmosphere in this room is tense. Yeah. And it's hot in here. It's hot in here. You might not be able to feel it through the live stream, but it is <laughs> boiling. Yeah, I tell you, and it has been throughout the whole whole tournament. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, this is a bit of a cooler day. Yeah. No, absolutely. Hoops Fix Program Summer League 2023 presented by Stan Sox and Contested.com. They've made this possible, as have all of our fantastic volunteers, our table officials, our referees, and of course, our players. What a brilliant way to spend a Sunday for the past five weeks. And if you want this to continue, you've got to let people know. Let people know about what's going on with Hoops Fix. And remember, if you want to support Who's Suits, you can head over to the, to the website, find out how you can be a patron, give money to the charity to help it keep on building and putting on these fantastic events. Kane Henry pulls up, keep three. Doesn't get a favorable bounce, does get Jack Demi underneath, batting away with, and Aiken, and a foul. So it's going to go to the strike to shoot two. Fouls called on nine in the red uniforms. That is Patrick Lanabekin. Tolerakiki sits down. Peter Ture checks in. <laughs> uh, 
And the free throw. Oh, no, good. He stepped over the line. So he hit the shot, doesn't get the points. It's 20 plays, 26. Final minute of play. I do not understand how this first half is still going. It feels like we've played the full 40 already. Yeah, running clock as well. It's, you know, it's going to be packed full of action, man. Oloreren hands off to Ubiaro, kicks out. Three balls on the way. Back to back from Hafiz Abdul. Again, that's what he does. Andre Arasol. Trying to get one back on his former teammate down in Worthing. As Abdul putting on the pressure. 10 seconds. And again, high intensity stuff. The dogs are out. Broadmoor wanted time. Didn't get it. He Sam did get by it. Coach Ricky. So Broadmoor called for time with about 10 on the clock. He'll get it with 7.3 on the clock. Three-point game. Second period. Second period. Second period. 7.3 seconds we, left man? in it. Second period? Where are we, man? <laughs> We're in Brixton. <laughs> and also, Glacier boys, not only do they have an abundance of talent on their bench and around there and stood around their bench right now in playing talent, coaching talent, they've also got Aaron Rye, who is being their water technician. <laughs> I've just seen him wandering off with about a man three of or many talents. Bottles. A man of many talents. Yeah, I think that goes to show the character of the individual, yeah. the player. Absolutely. So it's going to be Glacier Boys. Oh, and they're adding time to the clock. So how much time is getting added? 15 seconds. 15 seconds back on the clock. So I, I wondered if they were going to add a couple. I didn't think 15, but hey. The Glacier Boy is not complaining. So they'll get 14 seconds to get a good look. It could potentially give hoop space. One shot. Seeing how this goes, we could have a tie game going into half. Andre Arasol. Andre Arasol to inbound. It's with Steele. The clock's ticking away. That's a great, great screen by Aiken off the ball. Arasol inside. Pulls into the hands of Fis Abdul. He's fouled. Looking for a referee. And it's a regulation foul called on number four, Andre Arasol. And time expires at the end of the first half. The score, hoop space, 23. The o, uh, sorry, Glacier Boys, 26. An absolutely breathless first 20 minutes of action. Stan. Oh, bro. Three-point game, man. It's been insane you know you see in the space guys go to the locker room i'm telling you now they're gonna come out in the second half hungry man uh, i'm talking like sunday roast haven't eaten anything all day mom's late cooking dinner kind of hungry bro it's gonna be crazy and then glacier boys as we said surrounded by a great coaching staff right now and they're just as locked in um as the hoop space guys are but just put some quick stats to you danny evans leading the scoring um for the glacier boys with seven points um denzel ubiario um, with nine points in the fixture um as well as two assists to go along with that you know peter toure also contributes to scoring with four points four rebounds but we got to say Hafiz Abdul hitting some major, major threes in that last little stretch in the second quarter. Two big ones. I think last year in the finals, he actually hit seven threes. Seven threes in the game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, he came to play. He came to play and he's come to play today. He's had a couple of big moments. He, he's the one who we can credit with denying Glacier Boys 
a real good look at the basket. Drew the foul as well from Arasol. In the end, it didn't amount to anything, that foul, in the moment. Yeah. And who knows what that is going to mean throughout the course of the rest of our contest. As, I mean, we talk about the great and the good of British basketball being in the house. I mean, just look around, drink it in. This is, again, an awesome, awesome setting to be playing. The Hoops Fix Pro Summer League 2023 final, men's final here in Brixton. Stan Socks and Contested.com have made or allowed this all to happen. They didn't make it all happen. That was a lot of hard work from a lot of people going yeah. around in Hoops Fix t-shirts right now. We've got to give a special shout out right here on here. So I had to about to do a little competition chance to win some loot for Donchick shoes. I think it's about 30 seconds. Okay. Goes for the jam. Okay, okay. He, he, he can dunk, but the handle's a bit... Mm. Okay. Free throw four I think it's 30 seconds to score a layup, a free throw and a three pointer. Let's see how the three looks. Ooh. Long rebound. Three balls on the way. High up. Can't go. I think he's going to make it. He's going to make it. He's going to make it. That's money. Oh. The hype man, Stan. Hey, man. I, th I thought he had it. But I should have known from the Arsenal top. Should have known from the Arsenal top. Don't forget, you can keep in touch with British basketball all summer long, all season long. Hoopsfix.com is your place to go. And of course, for us across all the social media platforms, Hoops Fix and Hoops Fix Women, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and even Threads. Threads, yeah, yes. man. Go get us, go, go get us on us at Threads, man. This. So, and uh, if you are on Threads, give us a nickname for Denzel Ubiara, man. <laughs> we're asking for it, we're waiting for it. Dental and time over arrow. I think Tahir is still trying to give away these, these shoes right now. 30 seconds. Casually done on the layup. Very lax to days before in this. Oh. Cash short, nobody rebounding for him. Get him out of here, man. Yeah, he, was, he was too casual, he was too casual. Look at this. Bruh. Yeah, joke, man. Yes. Gotta make a three now. They're gonna give him the three ball from the corner. Hey! Hey! Yes. Beautifully done. I think he's going away with a very fine pair of sneakers. There you go. That could have been you. It could have been you, but you wanted to stay at home and you didn't want to come and watch the prime live. Don't make the same mistake next year. Maybe next year it can be. If you want to know all about everything that Who6 have going on, we're not going to say it too many more times. Make sure that you're across us on the social media platforms. And of course, Hoopsfix.com. 20 more minutes of non-stop action about to get back underway. 23 plays 26. It's going to be Hoopspace Ball. It's play, I tell you, it's, it's quite a funny um, atmosphere that these guys are played with because they are competitive. These guys are going hard at each other mm -hmm. and then you'll have like moments of levity because they're mates, in some cases they're teammates. Yeah. It's, uh, I think for me, it's basketball the way it ought to be played. I want to take this opportunity to give a special shout out to the DJ for the Prime this summer, DJ Katz. Has been excellent. And staining the crowds and setting us on the decks. As Victor Olerarin trying to drive in, makes it real difficult. Or rather, the defense from the Glacier Boys made it difficult. Trying to jump it off inside, no good there. This is a Kane Henry. Evans, three balls up, down. 
Kane Henry. 23 plays 29. That's a good start to proceedings in the third. Get a stop and a three. Rubiaro steps in. No good. From the top of the key. Ooh. Oh, done back inside. Hafiz Abdul. That's that was a nice time. Eight points. Credit the assist, Oloreri. Andre Arasol has the lane, drives through. And I think that foul's going to go on. Number one, it does. And that's Oloreri's third personal foul. Not what he will have wanted. And that gives Joel DeFele a decision to make. As the three-point play the old-fashioned way doesn't go. 25 plays 31. Three balls on the way. No good from Gray. Oh, Fis Abdul keeps it alive. And it's turned over Carl Wheatle. Great defensive stand there from yeah. Matthew Ullman. Yeah, brilliant defense from Ullman there in transition. Really difficult thing to do. Arasol Conco, the long way around. Victor Olerarin. Looking for options, kicks to the top. It's with that man again, Hafiz Abdul. Does he miss? Had a hand in his face from an elite European player. A it new nickname alert, alert. Have three Abdul. Three ball from Kate Ooh. Henry. I tell you what, that's even better. That's in back net. And time has been taken by Hoop Space. Again, an early timeout call. 7.39 left in the third, 28.34 the score. Again, I think this is definitely a case of he's seen something he doesn't like and he wants to address it. What is your thoughts? Uh, I, I, I think he's, he's made a very adamant point about going bucket for bucket. Um, I think he wants his team to lock in in transition defense and really, really switch on to these guys answering back. You have to remember the Glacier Boys is a team full of professionals. They're used to if a bucket goes in, getting it straight back in and trying to get a score back on the board. So I think that's what Blue Space needs to lock into right now. You can't go bucket for bucket. That can't be the story of their game if they lose this one. No, you're absolutely right. You cannot trade with the Glacier Boys. Teams have tried that and teams have come way short when they've been doing that though Ankh took him right to the wire in fact they took him to overtime last time that 59-61 loss to the Glacier boys just checking out some of the stats here uh, pretty even on fast break points for a piece um, but who's space leading the game in steals but obviously oh not capitalising on them can't get the finish, tried to cut across you. Gets it on the second, maybe third attempt, and El St. Bernard. Weasel. It's down low to Jack Demi. Can Hoop Space get the stop? That's what that timeout would have been about. Let's get some stops, let's play some defense. Toure doing good work on Jack Demi. And three seconds is the call. So a good stop, a good stand. A good stop, a good stand. Now they need to capitalize on it, get a good bucket. Here's Underneath Toure. to Peter Toure. Somehow no foul. Three balls on the way. Oh. Fisa Abdul no good, though that is an off-the-ball foul. Big old shove by Burnell on NL San Bernard. So that'll be a foul on Jack Burnell. I make that his first personal foul. I make that also first team foul. For the Glacier boys, they got 14 on the shot clock. Do heap space. Peter Ture on the outside finds Fis Abdul. Mid range jumper. Oh, that's wet. It is wet. It is wet. Nothing but net that time. Peter Ture. Point game. What's Danny Evans have in the locker? Dries, floats it. Can't get it off the glass. Nearly took it off each other. Ture and Ullman. Great screen set by Hafiz Abdul. Let him know he was there. Step back, three ball. Fouled in the act of shooting. And he's going to go to the stripe. Josh Steele sends him to the stripe. He's going to get one shot. It's going to be worth three points. 
How many times have we seen that so far today? Landing space being taken away on three point attempts. For the lead. Too strong. Gets the rebound. So a bit of a reprieve for the Glacier boys. Hand off to Denzel Obiaro. Gets him slipping the three ball. Matthew Olmer and Gibson the lead. Hoop space up by one. Just like that. And the crowd goes wild as well. Here we go. Oh yeah, the defense shows out. Crowd have picked their favourites now. Evans on the outside. He's been picked up by St. Bernard. That's been tipped. Oh, a foul has been called. Seven. That's an offensive foul. Called on Danny Evans. Change is coming. 11 and 8 checking in. That is Dan Aiken and Carl Wheatle. Jack Demi sits as does Danny Evans. Bro, I love it. I love how animated the Hoops Place bench is right now, bro. They are so into this. They've been animated the whole game, yeah, but now after fair. taking that lead. They were animated in the warm up, to be fair. <laughs> Not entirely sure what's going on courtside. Oh. Shout out to John Letizia. Our yeah, the moisture technician. Window. Come on, John, you gotta get on there with your hands, bro. What's going on? Yeah, big shout out to John Letizia actually leading on the referees for this tournament, making sure that we have officials every week yeah. for the games. Big shout out to our table officials that have been here week in, week out, doing every single game. It's not an easy job. Without these people, the game would not be possible, as we said earlier. Darren. It's not an easy job, and like you say, it's a sticky, it's been sticky and uncomfortable at times in this gym. And a lot of mental concentration and for our officials physical exertion as well, as an offensive foul has been called on NL St. Bernard. Team space still lead it, the clock stays running. It's not gonna stop until the final two minutes of the game. First personal foul for St. Bernard. The Hoops Space fans in attendance and getting the chance going again as Hafiz Abdul comes up with it. We're going to see Andre Arasol checking in next time. Driving in as Hafiz Abdul can't finish. And I was saying Bernard was there. On the breakaway, Kane Henry, the foul. We'll see if that's unsportsmanlike. It's what Ricky Broadmoor wants. And our officials are going to talk things over. If you're wearing a black uniform, you're throwing up the... Unsportsmanlike foul call. I wonder if that's what the conversation is. Clock stays rolling. Explanation to the table. Clock has stopped. One point ball game. Keep space. I think the stream is being checked. So we, we're waiting to see what the official call is. Oh, it is an unsportsmanlike foul called on red six. That's Denzel Ubiaro. One more of those and he's out of the game. So it's free throws and possession. And I think, did we just get a VAR check? Did, did we just get, get a VAR check? Watching the old uh, stream. You say VAR? Yeah, yeah, video assisted referee. Yeah, I know what VAR means, mate. Well, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, can we get a little instant replay up in here? I think, that, I think we just did. As the free throws go, so that's huge. Keep spate. Uh, sorry. Glacier boys take the lead. Substitutions on the floor. Kane Henry takes to the bench, Andre Arasol checks in, Ricky Broadmoor looking very happy with himself, that's the cat who got the cream, that's his side, yeah. on that and sportsman like. I don't know how that powder blue shirt Ricky wearing hasn't got sweat patches on him. <laughs> He's a cool customer, you know that. He's wearing the Glacier Boys blue today. 
Passing inside is Wheatle. Hands off on the outside to Josh Steele. Steele pulls up, three ball, deep three, can't go. Oh, Wheatle with the rebound through contact. He's going to go to the stripe to try and put down the two. It's another thing that the that, um, loose space needs to do, man. They really, really need to lock in everything. Once that shot goes up, you cannot allow this team to get second chance points, man. Absolutely agree. And again, it's worth remembering why are we up this side of the floor? An unsportsmanlike yeah. foul. Yeah, reward yourself. Play good defense, recover the ball, and, and then get it going. The two point shot goes 35 plays 38. It's a three point differential. And I'll say, but oh, that's off the foot of Carl Wheatle. Carl Wheatle looking like a handball goalkeeper there. <laughs> Love that. Blocking foul. Called on 11, Dan Aiken. <laughs> and the crowd clapping on the referees for blowing their whistle for hoop space this time. I think you're right, we do have some crowd favourites. Oh, for sure. Oh, Ubiaro with the moves. Fouled in the act of shooting. He's going to go to the line. Yeah, we've had more whistles than an Amma Piano concert these last two minutes, man. It's been crazy. I've just been Gatwicked on that one, I'm afraid. <laughs> you need to lock into Amma Piano, bro. <laughs> if you don't know, get to know. Sings it out of the stripe. It'll be Aro. Puts down the two. It's a one point contest once more. Ooh. Ooh. Josh Steele nearly losing the handle. It's with Arasol. Arasol driving in, tried to dump it off. So again, as we so often, we've seen a lot of this today. It's a really great idea. The execution, though, hasn't always been 1 100. Final minute of play in the third. 37 plays 38. In space for the lead. Great drive off the glass. Can go into the hands of Dan Aiken. Hafiz Abdul, credit him with that turnover. Driving in on Wheatle. Can't go. Kane Henry into the hands of Wheatle. 33 seconds. Paul oh, Wheatle showing his class all the way down the floor. They want pretty much the last shot. They're not going to quite get it. Oh, no. Unsportsmanlike foul is the call again. Three red. That's Matthew Ullman. You see, this is the thing. Who's face not happy with that call, but at the end of the day, last man over the half, that's always an unsportsmanlike foul. It's always going to be an unsportsmanlike foul, even after this still. Hate to say it, accidentally tripped him up, but that's just the rules of the game. You can't argue with that. You, you can't, can't argue you with can't that. Argue it's, it's there. It's in black and white. And you know what? It's not in yellow highlight for a long time. Last man. If he's the last man on the fast break, it's always on sports smell like far. So it's down the first. One shot to come. You know, the game never used to be like that. But um, that's how it is. And this is the second. Now, I, th I think for me, I think it's a, a, a real positive, the unsportsmanlike like foul rule. I think it needed to be brought in. And I think, to be honest, it's really benefited. I think it's made the game a little bit safer yeah, in yeah. certain instances. And certainly, a lot more entertaining to watch because you can't just like do tippy tappy fouls around. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you have to make a play on the ball, right? For sure. But I think it does make it a lot harder on the officials to determine what is a play on the ball and what isn't yeah. a play on the ball. And, uh, you know, like any referee, and it's always down to discretion, and it's always going to be more difficult than it looks. But where, you know, where technology allows, there is, uh, which apparently is here, they can have a second look at things. We've got a four-point game going in, looking into the fourth quarter right now. For sure. Let's give us a, give us a stats update. Uh, you want a stats update? Statman Stan. Yeah, Statman Stan. So we got Hafiz Abdul leading the scoring for Team Hoot Space with 11 points. Denzo Ubiario contributing with 9 and Peter Toure with 6. Uh, and to go along with 7 rebounds um, for Peter Toure. Over on the Glacier Boys side, currently leading the game by 4. Kane Henry with 11 points, 5 rebounds. 
Danny Evans contributing with seven and Jack Bennell with six points, two massive threes in the first quarter. Jack Bennell also on the floor in the fourth quarter, which I'm not surprised about. Clutch shooters. The only player to have not scored a point for the Glacier Boys is Carl Wheatle. Really? That's what the stats are telling me. No, that can't be right. But I think I'm pretty sure that's wrong. My stats have not updated, and yours have yours. We are back underway. Ten minutes to play here. 37 plays 41. It's the Glacier Boys in possession. Great, great ball movement from the team in the black uniforms, the Glacier Boys, the defending champions. Arguably the favourites coming into today, as that's been stripped by Denzel Ubiaro. Afis Abdul skips it over the timeline. Finds Ubiaro. Driving, driving. Foul on the floor. Foul called on number eight. That's Carl Wheatle. Yeah, looking at the stats here, Carl Wheel not, not getting on the score sheet today, but he's done a lot on the floor again, doing those things that you don't see. Locking up on defense, always got himself two rebounds and one assist. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, because again, our stats haven't refreshed in a, in a minute, so I think I do remember him getting on the score sheet late doors in the third. So I think all the Glacier boys have scored. Oh my, that's a power move, told to get up. So yeah. no harm, no foul, no offensive, no defensive, just playing hard basketball. It's in the hands of Andre Arasol. Tries to send it in underneath, and Andre Arasol can't keep it alive. I think my opinion there on that one, I think Andre was already falling. I think Andre was already falling um, before he took the contact. Referee's got to make a decision there to either call it as a flop um, or an offensive. Yeah, it's one of those simultaneous decisions where both benches Unhappy. <laughs> Always good fun. Obiaro. Showing off his handles. Oh, finds it from the mid range. And it's a two point game once again. 39 41. He needs to keep it clean though. He's got that unsportsmanlike foul against him. Attacker, another unsportsmanlike, and he's done. That's Carl Wheatle. I think that's four personal for Carl. Offensive foul again. Three changes coming in. We're going to see Evans, Henry, and Jack Demi in. Wheatle to the bench, along with Burnell and Aiken. So I think this might be your crunch time five for the Glacier boys. Especially if... Oh, Ubiaro! Three! Gives the lead to his face by one! Yes, sir. Get in your bag, bro. Get in your bag. I think Glacier Boy's lucky not to be sending him to the line as well. As oh, Andre Arasol shushes the Hoops Space supporters in attendance as he gives his side the lead once more. 43 43. And a foul through contact. He's headed to the strike to add one more. Denzel Ubiaro. The foul called on number four, Andre Arasol. Hey, the crowd going nuts right Broadmoor, now. Broadmoor, really displeased with that decision. But it's not going to be changed right now. So, Obiaro to make it a two-point lead. Doesn't go. Oh, technical has been assessed to Ricky Broadmoor. So, bench technical yeah, Ricky, on the coach. Ricky not happy with that one. Still no sweat patches on the powder blue shirt though. He's keeping it cool, man. I'm pretty sure that is the first bench technical or coach technical we've seen this whole time this summer. In fact, I don't know if we've seen a technical before that. The first, uh, sorry, the free throw goes. So it is a two point advantage. A little bit ironic. They missed the free throw that he was originally arguing about. Yeah, exactly. Steele with his side down by two. Inside, hands everywhere. Who's the foul assessed to? That's number 11. 
Yes, sir. Right. It's a two, right? That's his third of the game. Three ball, Andre Arasol shoots a three, shoots and duckers towards the hoop space bench also. Puts his side back up by one, it's as you were. Denzel Ubiara, what a game he's had, driving in, finishes, count it. One point the difference once more. Arasol goes behind his back, he's been picked up by Olerere and what a battle between these two. Two super exciting D1 stars, kicks to the corner, three balls short from Kane Henry. Where's the ball going? It's going the way of the Glacier boys. Take breath, everybody. You'll be all right now with 18 points in the game. <laughs> He's come to play today. As that's been picked off, it's going to stay with the Glacier boys. A hoop space. The extended Hoops Space family on their feet. Oh, the decision's been turned over. Again, always good to see the officials come together. And if that was the correct call, then good to see it be made. For the people. For the people. <laughs> the crowd is loving that one. Take your Hoops Space jersey off, buddy. Denzel Ubiaro thought about the step back three. Instead, finds Lana Pekin. No good from outside. And Fisa Abdul battling away. There's a foul on the play. It's going on 12. Josh Steele. And that is going to send, I assume, Hafiz Abdul to the stripe. That would make the most sense. It does. Carl Wheatle to check back into the contest. He comes for Boba and Jack Domi. Talk to me about the game of Jack Domi so far. I mean, he started the game off with an absolute crazy highlight. Um, honestly, since then, haven't seen much um, from him. You know, you think with his size, it would be a real wild wow factor in this game. But again, haven't seen much from him, man. It's all right. He finds Lana Pekin. Lana Pekin nearly hits the most impossible angle. Can't go. And it's still a one-point lead for him. Space. Three minutes remaining in the contest. Why can't this game last forever? Carl Wheatle. Finding his way into the paint, draws the foul. Joel Ofele, very displeased with the decision. I don't think you can argue with it. Lana Pekin picks up his third personal. Second team foul. Interestingly, Glacier boys, four team fouls in this period. Could be very important in a number of different ways. It goes. Glacier boys are up. 47-48. Lana Packen. Oh, giving a bit too much room. Doesn't capitalize with a shot. Finds Toure. One-on-one -on -one with Wheatle. Breaking his way inside. Oh. Puts it in off the glass. Too strong. 50 up. That's a reigning MVP move right there. We're inside the final two minutes. We're inside FIBA regulation basketball time. Step back, three ball, Carl Wheatle sinks it from outside. And Hoops Race, trail now. El Capatina. 49 plays 41. Denzel Ubiaro tries to get it straight back. He can't. Andre Arasol with the rebound. Over the timeline goes Wheatle. Does he want to go up again? Driving on Peter Toure. Great defense from somebody. I think that was Toure got a hand in there. Ubiaro fouled in the act of shooting. He's heading to the line to shoot two. Lord Moore still working away on one of our officials. 121 to play. Denzel Ubiaro to tie it at the strike. One twenty-one. First goes from Ubiaro. So 50 up on the board for both teams. This is 21st point in the contest. This to tie it. 
He doesn't, and a good rebound pulled down by Dan Aiken. Carl Wheatle slowing things down. Kane Henry looking to pick up the pace, in fact. Battling away on the baseline. People think he stepped out of bounds. Andre Arasol can't hit from outside. And Hafiz Abdul pulls down the board. This is a big possession right here. Big possession right here. Huge as we enter the final minute of play. Denzel Ubiaro has been almost without equal today. Driving in through the paint. That is good. Clean defense from the Glacier boys. Broadmoor Atkins looking over today. at Ofele. And a timeout has been taken by Hoopspace. They want to talk things over. 50, place 51, 50.2 seconds left on the clock. <sighs> I mean, in that last position there, Denzel Obiara is the one you want the ball in his hands, but fantastic sure. one on one defense there from Dan Akin. Well read, and especially with his team in foul trouble, going for the block, standing strong. Very, very good defensive play there. I mean, you've, ju you've just said it though, you've just said the key thing standing strong, yeah, yeah. standing tall, be vertical. You have your space on the floor. And if you're disciplined, and it's tough, it's so tough. But if you're disciplined, you can play effective defense even in this situation. And you have to. Absolutely. That was excellent. Kane Henry leading the score for his team with 13 points still in the game. But I've got to say, a huge three from Carl Wheel in, 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 in that last little phase of play there. Huge, huge three right here on the left wing. And um, I think. That's the one that's really giving his team a bit of momentum here. Nine points personal for Wheatle to go along with his seven rebounds in the contest. Kane Henry, 13 points, five rebounds. Denzel Ubiaro, 21 points. Hafiz Abdul, 11 points to go with four rebounds. I mean, those two, for me, have really been leading the way for Hoopspace. Yeah, I mean, we talked at the beginning of the game about one team wanting it more than the other. I think we're at a point now where both teams want it. <laughs> like, 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 we've, like we've gone through the madness. Both these teams have been through a lot. We've had technical fouls from coaches. Let's see how it goes. Back to you, D. Obiaro inbounds it to Ullman. Peter Toure trying to battle his way through in the paint. Oh, puts it down. Immediate timeout call by Ricky Broadmoor, 52 plays, 51, 41.6 seconds to play. Don't for a second think that's going to be the, the winner, surely not. Peter Torre though, puts his side up by one. That's what he does. He's that been doing that. He's been doing that. I'm telling you, bro, since week one, Peter Torre has been doing that. Since week one last year. Since week one last year, with two seasons deep. Peter Toure again. I've got to say though, well done to the Glacier boys for not fouling there. That was again, good defense, yeah. better offense. Absolutely, but they kept it clean. And that is so important at this point in the game. 41.6 seconds. What is Ricky Broadmoor cooking up? And you know, I always, it's always an interesting question to me. Do you advance the ball? Of course you advance the ball. No, are you saying, of course, I mean, there's 41.6 seconds left on the clock. Advance the ball, you lose 10 seconds. How often are you in scoring? Yeah, for sure. That's a good how point. How often are you in scoring? Where does that ball go? Uh, evidently, not advanced. They want to kill clock. I yeah. reckon they're confident in scoring. I reckon they want to make it as difficult as possible for Hoops Bay well, to get meaningful <laughs> opportunities. As the people, they're on their feet, we'll standing room only in Brixton. You see what coach, we we'll see what coach Rick has drawn up. He, he's inbounding it from down here, so I think you're right about them winding down the clock. But a crowd, clear favourites here from Team Hoop Space. I think by it's all said and done, the game will have been the big winner. Andre Arasol gets to his spot, looking around, can't get the shot away. What's the call? There's a hand in the air, so we've got a foul. Victor Oloreri needs to be very Oloreri. careful not to get himself a technical foul. That's a fourth personal for Oloreri. He's uh, walking it off right now. I mean, so he's, he's very lucky for the referees to be leaning in here because any reaction like that is usually yeah, a technical foul. And that would have been him out of the game. Arasol to the strike. I think they've read the situation. First goes. I'm not sure why Matthew Ullman's uh, blocking out. 
So we're tied at 52. Gets it to go, Andre Arasol gives the Glacier boys the advantage. We're, the shot clock is off, 20 seconds to play. This for the championship, the Hoosticks throw in Summer League 2023, it doesn't go. Kane Henry, still no foul, skips over the timeline. It's Arasol, it's underneath. Aiken surely settles it. 5.4 seconds and it's a three-point game. There's no timeouts. Peter Torre puts up the pair and it's no good. Glacier boys are your champions in 2023. They win it 55-52 over Hoop Space. And yet again, they take it to the very last moment. What a game, what a victory. Stan, just talk us through it. Mate, what a game, what a game. We hope you've enjoyed it at home as much as we have here. What a thriller. But this is what we wanted, man. We won the close game at the end. We didn't want something that was easy to predict. This is why we love the game of basketball, man, all the way down to the wire. Congratulations to the Glacier boys getting back-to-back -back wins here um, for the Pro-Am. Um, commiserations to Glacier boys putting on a fantastic, fantastic game um, here in the Hoosier Six Pro-Am final. What a game. Like... It's one of those cliches, are oh, the sports the winner? Are oh, the fans in attendance the winner? No, that was a brilliant advert for basketball. As we've seen all last weekend and all this weekend as well, everybody in attendance, they got to see that for free. Yep. Oh, my days. Let's talk about our players of the game. Who have you got for hoop space as your player of the game? I'm going to assume it's Denzel Ubiara. You mean Mr. Hangtime Mr. himself? Mr. Hangtime himself. It's got to be Mr. Hangtime himself, man. 21 points. A huge, huge game um, for his team. But at the same time, I have to give a very big shout out to Peter Ture. He's coming, man. Mr. Struggle Buckets. He comes in and he does all the hard things gets the tough buckets to go, rebounding, guarding the big fellas. And you know, he had a, he had a matchup of having to guard Jack Domi in this game, who, you know, after the first quarter, um, wasn't as present as we would have thought of him. So we've got to give a big shout out to Peter Ture as well. He's still right. He's the man, and man in the big moment, the MVP of the Hoopsticks Pro-Am 2023 for the men's side of the tournament is Kane Henry. Yeah, big shout out to Kane Henry. He's had a fantastic tournament, averaging 12.5 points, 5.3 rebounds and 1.3 assists. Some huge plays for the Glacier boys. He's been a fantastic addition to this team and a big credit to why they, these guys have gone back to back this year. 100%. Not only that, he has been so entertaining to watch. He's not just played well, he's played flashy basketball yep. that gets people off their feet. Yeah, another one of those players is part of that gold medal Commonwealth team um, from Birmingham Commonwealth Games earlier last year. And is he your Glacier Boys player of the game for the final? Of course, that award isn't for the final. That award is for the whole totality, the whole body of work I for mean, the whole tournament. I definitely agree he's the MVP of, of, of the tournament. Um, as we said, consistency. He's been here every week. Um, and an absolute credit to the tournament to have him joining us here. For sure. We've also got to give a big shout in this game to Carl Wheatle. Finished with nine points, but two huge threes at the end there. Nine, seven, and one. And your champions in 2023. The Glacier Boys crown the Hoosfix Pro-Am Summer League men's champions for the second time in two seasons. What a great team, and there's a few faces missing here this week as well. Big shout out to Tom Child, who played the point for the majority of the tournament for the Glacier boys. I know, I know, in my conversations with Ricky, he's been looking at the finals week, because of course, all the teams play every round, and he was always confident of making it here. But he was like, I'm going to be sure if you guys come finals. Yeah. They battled through. They battled through difficult moments. And a brilliant final, massive shout out again to our match officials, our referees, our table officials, every volunteer. And a huge shout out as well to the fans in attendance who have made this a truly, truly special event, special tournament, and a fantastic way to spend the last five weeks of the summer. Talk to me, Stan. What has been your holistic view 
any big moments that you've really enjoyed from the whole tournament? Of oh, this tournament? Oh, it's the been tournament. nuts. It's been nuts, you know. Um, it's been a pleasure to be able to be on the mic uh, hosting the majority of the games. Um, you know, it's, it's an honor to be a part of this team and to be a part of a tournament like this that I think is going to have a long, long history. If I had to pick out a favorite moment, um, apart from this final that we just saw here, I have to say there was some, there was a crazy game early on um, in the tournament. Um, if you want to go look at the highlights, go ahead and look at them over on <laughs> uh, the Hoop Six Instagram account. But uh, I see people get dunked on. I've seen alley -oops. I've seen people get ankle broken. Um, we have to give a big shout out to the women's teams, by the way. Yeah, sure. We've had some amazing women's teams and women's talent come and show out in the program this year. And I think that standard is only going to get higher and higher. We've had GB level talent, international players coming back home on home to show out for the women's game. And um, the one thing I'm going to say to finish on my side is that if you didn't pull up this year, make sure you pull up next year. And make sure you go and support Hoop 6. Become a Patreon support like share do whatever it takes to help share the game yeah for, for sure as soon as the dates get announced you want to put it in your calendar you want to make sure you get down here because it is a party every year well that's going to do it for us here at the hoop six program summer league 2023 it's done it's in the books it's been live from the brixton recreation center and it's been presented by stand socks and contested.com the final word has to be about our champions and it was the Glacier boys they edged that hoop space it was a classic and they take the championship 55 52 the Glacier boys are the champions in 2023 peace out guys take care of yourselves much love